the smartest guys around to break it down like they want well actually they didn't really win the game at all survivor no way to <laughs> Two guys who know everything except how to start a podcast on time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. I mean, we did. This is pretty good. This is good for us. I, it's my. Yeah. I blame myself and you. I blame me and you. Those are the people I blame. Mm-hmm. The top yeah. two people for sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, the rankings are arbitrary and reductive as usual. Steven, what's <laughs> happening? I'm just excited. I'm really so you know, like right before every Survivor season starts, I get like very like, oh my gosh, like I've been doing this for so long, Again. like burned out. Like, what do I have to say about this show anymore? And then I watch the episode and I get so excited. It's a great show. Yeah, it's a great TV show. It's so fun. Um, to watch it's a great premise. If, if you are listening to this podcast, and <laughs> you, you don't need to it, sell me. I'm in. I'm in. If you want to know if Survivor is a great show, I'm the. I'm going to tell you right now. It is. Um, it's a, it's a, so like, and, and this season is really fun. That like really big fun. Good. Characters. Yeah, it's just so exciting. And even if I don't have anything new to say, I'm excited to say it. Yeah. Okay. Aaron thinks that the gecko re-energized us all. Is that the <laughs> is it the gecko? I do feel like there's something like kind of like. The gecko actually did excite me because it was like a little bit more of the fun and the absurdity of Survivor. You know, we're going to mm-hmm. carry a giant random object, you know, uh, it's just a little bit more of the the kookiness that we love. Yeah. OK, well, so excited to get into all of it here with you today. I'm so excited to get your take on everything. I get that you're excited, but you didn't really tweet during the episode. So that's usually like my spoilers for how uh, Steven is going to feel coming into the episode. Well, I had a lot of like, I had some like Jelinski jokes. And then when like he was the first boot, I was like, you know what? You don't want to pile on the first boot. Like this guy's going to have some trauma. I talked to him already. Check out my interview with Jelinski. He's fine. He's talking about ready to, he's ready to come back. To back to Survivor. He's ready. Or back to like, yeah. Oh, wow. Steven Jelinski is unflappable. Yeah, you're, that's great. You're, you're not gonna Can't rattle Jelinski. No flapping. He's yeah. fine. Yeah, he's fine. Okay? All right, good. I feel like you know you can be fine on the outside, but you can be hurting inside. I think so, but I think you're okay with your Jelinski jokes. I think that okay. he can handle it. I think he's All probably right. heard of a lot of them in the last 24 hours. So yeah. we're gonna have our breakdown of this. We'll take your questions as well here live in this podcast as we get into everything. And of course, want to make sure you're subscribed all season long. Hit that subscribe button if you're here with us live on YouTube or robiswebsite.com slash subscribe. Steven, did you did you see the big news this week about my interview with Jeff Probst? Yes, the 5,000th episode. Holy yes. cow. And you got Probst. Yeah. Amazing. And, and he was like, and... and he was in this cozy, cozy room and the fire yeah. was going. Like, yeah. where was your fire? You were, your room didn't look so cozy. No, I've never had a fireplace behind me. And so I should maybe consider that. That could be yeah. like the next level. Yeah. And he showed, you know, he was like, now that he's done a podcast, he has a lot of res- even more respect for, for all your, your hard work. Mm-hmm. And he has yeah. a dog. Dog, a lot of respect for your work with dogs. Yes. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know this. Steven, uh, also uh, a dog lover. Love dogs. Yeah. It's a bit of yeah, a, a big part of my can't have one yet. You know, two kids and a dog. I know people do it, but uh, I'm not down there. the road. Yeah, down, down the road. You'll be back. You'll be yeah. back in the game. Just like yeah. Jelinski. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so the two hour premiere. How are you feeling about two hour premiere? I thought it went very quickly. I mean, yeah. I. You know, we love the longer episodes generally, right? More character moments. It was great. I felt like I got to know basically everyone a little bit. Was there anyone who we didn't didn't really get a, a glimpse no, of? No, I think they go out of their way to give, make sure they give everybody something. I, I don't yeah. think anybody got frozen out of episode one. Yeah, I mean, the people who I feel like I know the least, maybe like Randon, maybe, you know, Jem, not so much, a little bit of Jem in there. Um, but yeah. I feel like I got like a, a good snapshot of, of, of basically everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they really, I think... 
you know, worry a lot about, okay, we want to make sure everybody, we, we brought everybody out here. Like they're very invested in the contestants. And I feel yeah. like whether, whether you like that or not, like I do think that the show does really care about, I think you could maybe argue they care too much sometimes about what the players think about, uh, like how the, they're, they're coming off on the show. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's nice that like they're just not. I mean, they definitely didn't hold back with the, <laughs> poor Porchelinski, one of like the greatest clownings in like the recent memory in terms of like how. Uh, I mean, obviously, it sounded like it was a very rough couple of days for this poor man, and perhaps even rougher than we saw. Um, but it, it was a tough. <laughs> I wouldn't want that to be my. I mean, listen, I got some rough episodes too, and I wouldn't have yeah. wanted you know to none of the. And they it, it, it sucked. It sucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like that Jelinski it, it didn't take it that badly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he did have a lot of good humor about it. And also because it did feel like he was in a, I mean, he put himself in a lot of crappy positions and the worst, you know, basically the worst happened and he made the worst of them. So, um, but, but uh, he kept on putting himself out there. God bless him. Yeah. I saw See, Brandon the- from last season suggest that he and Jelinski go on the amazing race together, which I would, that would be genius casting. If it ever, it, obviously it's unlikely to happen, but mm-hmm. be Brandon casting. Donlin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Steven. So I feel like that with Jelinski, the thing that he did, he seemed to have broken the cardinal rule of the new era survivor right. in that he, his story was a, a story of giving up. Right. And we yes. know that that is, the worst thing that you can do out here on survivor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's right. It's all about like putting yourself out there, you know, living every moment, seizing every opportunity. He did seize every opportunity. He yes. didn't just squandered every opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you feel Here's like my biggest, was, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. No, I was really excited about, you know, I felt like I was like working on like a Jelinski Andre the Giant kind of impression. You know, you kind of like, hello, several ladies. And it's a terrible impression. <laughs> but like, you know, now I don't even have the opportunity to improve it, improve it. That's <laughs> very good. I was like, but I feel like over time it could have gotten good. And now, you know, until he returns, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that there's anything to survivors having a deeper voice? Is that if we're going to chart this, is there anything there for like uh, having n- not the best success on the show? Hmm. The deep of the else? voice. Who else are the deep voiced survivors? Classic deep voiced survivors who are the hmm. bases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Boston but- Rob is a very deep voice and is probably the most iconic survivor. So, mm-hmm. you know, you know, I think that's most iconic deal or no deal Island player. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Did you get your suitcase from Deal or No Deal Island yet? No, I gave them my address. I was like, I emailed you. I got an email from them, you know, and I was like, is this a scam, Rob? And you were like, no, it's not a scam. I'm like, no, we're going to send scam. a swag. Maybe for you, they sent you the swag and I got scammed. I Yeah, it's fine. I don't think that they, they sent anything that you would necessarily be looking for. A suitcase sounds nice. <laughs> it's a little suitcase. Okay. Well, I got, little, I got two little people in the house. Put your microphone in it when you travel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Steven. So, all right, uh, Jelinski, was it in doubt for you that it was ever not going to be Jelinski? I thought there was a very real chance. And maybe I'm like naive, but I thought Jess was a very real, vi- like a very viable option as someone who was less bonded with the tribe and clearly was, you know, having a breakdown of her own out there in terms of just like the lack of sleep, the like mentally falling apart, being scattered. Um, to me, that you very well could see her um, being the target. And I really wonder if Jelinski had not lost his vote, if it ultimately would have been her because he had like some kind of tentative, you know, gesture at an alliance in a way that we didn't really see her having. And I, I wonder if like the very fact that he could not play his shot in the dark made, you know, this is the first boot in the game. You don't want mm-hmm. any kind of F ups with that, right? You don't want to accidentally become the first boot. You know, for sure, Jelinski doesn't have a vote. He can't play his shot in the dark at all. And there's obviously also like, just like the perceived weakness of not having a vote. I wonder if that was the decisive factor for them of, you know, it's between these two, they're both messes. Let's go with the one who definitely can't back la- backfire on us. Yeah. I kind of feel like that if it was me, I think in the vacuum, uh, I feel like that maybe I would keep Jelinski around that even if he is getting in his own way a lot, like I feel like, I guess he didn't do great in the puzzles, but I kind of feel like that he's maybe going to bring more to, you know, the challenges, um, but maybe uh, I don't, is he an unreliable ally? I I think that, that it was, there was a lot of anti Jelinski sentiment, but I didn't hear a ton of like pro Jess sentiment. 
Right. Well, what's interesting was like, um, I think I, I read um, someone, either Dalton or Mike posted their voting confessionals. And I think it was Tiffany's, which was, you know, if I can't trust you with my secrets. So and there did seem to be a lot about like him talking too much, which we didn't mm -hmm. see as much in the episode because, you know, there's so much happening in this premiere and there's so many people to introduce. But I do wonder if it was that more that sense of an unreliable ally. Like this is someone who is talking too much, who's, you know, spreading, you know, too much information in addition to constantly putting him in, himself in positions where he's actually undermining the tribe rather than helping. I mean, you'd almost rather, I think you would rather have someone who's, you know, do, no, first do, do no harm. Right. And that's Jess is first do no harm. And Jelinski is like actively doing harm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That for Jess, it sounds like that, you know, her struggles are, are, are quite real. And the show did a good job of presenting that. I read Dalton's uh, recap of everything and he, uh, had like even more times like during the tribal council where that somebody would say something and just like just was not comprehending things that were happening at the tribal council. I have gone like three sleepless days on Survivor, like during like right uh, about the sort of mid merge for us in Cambodia, like literally zero sleep. And it was insane. Like, mm -hmm. like I could like words would not come out of my mouth correctly. You know, I had no idea what people were saying and how it like connected how those things connected to each other. Yeah, so what changed? Was it like weather related that you couldn't sleep? Well, for me, yeah, it was weather related. It was food. It was dehydration. I mean, it was just like a lot of environmental things. Um, but just like the impact of it on your brain and functioning. And especially if this is someone who already is, you know, hesitant to, you know, having trouble forming those bonds. Like if you can't even like process the words people are saying, that is such an impossible challenge, you know, in, in a game like Survivor. So I have so much empathy for that. Yeah. And it's not like when you're here and it's like, all right, put the coffee on. Right. It, yeah, it was a nothing. rough night. Yeah, totally. And even even here, you know, a couple nights, couple nights of no sleep in, in real life. And you're like, you know, I can't 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 deal with it. But but um, so I that's that's a real challenge. And honestly, I could really see her kind of getting her footing. You know, she can if she can get some sleep. Yeah. You think um, she can bounce back? Yeah, I do. You know, I mean, it, it was this is someone who is not on anyone's radar other than as, you know, so we don't know you well enough. And it's something that, you know, we talked about in the, in the laws of survivor power. And, and I'm sure you talked about it with Josh. It's like, you know, you having almost like a negative or non-existent first impression gives someone the chance to really positively impress you later. Yeah. Stephen, out of all the things I wanted to talk to you today, I was most excited to talk to you about what went on on the journey in this episode. Because yeah. I know you give a lot of thought to game design and what makes good games and what makes uh, things that are less than ideal. Yeah, but out of uh, all of my friends, I think that you uh, spend uh, a ton of time thinking about this. And, and I mean that I mean, that made you sound kind of like a loser, but uh, <laughs> I meant that in a very positive way. And... <laughs> I would love to know from you that was this a did you like the design of the game that they played here on the journey? Yeah, I mean, it was sort of like you can't even call it like an elegantly designed game because there was I mean, but it was I thought it was good. You know, it was not like a beautiful, you know, intricately designed like you know, mental game, but it was interesting. You know, I mean, obviously there's like a, a fundamental imbalance. There's no, you know, you get unlucky and draw like one of the hard cards. You know, there's, I mean, I haven't actually thought through this one very much, but it did feel like there was like a sort of imbalance. Like, you, you know, you draw this card and you, you're more at risk, you know, you draw, draw this card and you, I mean, but I, I, it was an enjoyable and it was kind of great how it played out. And I don't even know if they need to do it again, because, you know, the way Maria just like absolutely hacked Jelinski and hacked the mm -hmm. game was, was so beautiful. She was, she's you know, just like totally preyed on this poor, you know, 22 year old, right? Kid. He's like, if you are lying to me, I'm going to tell everybody. He's going to tell everybody you're going to be the most hated person on our two tribes. They're like, yeah, in situation. I I do want to talk about. The, I mean, talk about Jelinski too, and, and and you know, actually, like kind of analyze his decisions because, in of obviously, he played them each somewhat badly. But I don't think any one of them was actually that horrible. You know, if you're in that moment, you know, and you draw that card. Like there is a lot to be said for just kind of folding, losing your vote. He felt like he was in a solid alliance, and you know, like why piss off these two people? I mean, on the other yeah. hand, there's a way you can play it where you're like, this is the game we're playing, you know, like, sorry about it. But like, I had to play this to the hilt. But there's also something to be said for just being like, you know what, like, I'm going to accrue some goodwill with you guys. I'm losing my vote. There's nothing to be, you know, there's no real loss. 
of course he turned it into a yeah. real loss, but um, you know, just the actual act itself of folding the card, I don't think is that horrible. So do you think that that is the better way to go? Or you mentioned our 49 laws of survivor that I think yeah. we probably recorded about like uh, 12 years ago at this point. But, you know, I believe one of those rules is play the sucker. That do you think it would be maybe the best way to go of all the way around in a future season if they get this of, okay, you get the skull card. It's like, I definitely have the vote card. <laughs> I like say, ooh, like he's such a bad liar. He's yeah. so bad at this. Oh. And oh, wow. then and then you go back, tell your tribe, hey, everybody, they made us play this game. And I had to I'm so I, I'm just I, like I'm so bad at this. And they saw right through me. Then are is everybody like, ooh, okay, file that away. Rob's yeah, a bad that's liar. Like the, that's like the galaxy brain way to play this. But I do think like if you're in that moment, you're thinking, what what can I get out of this like little trio? And what I want to do is I want to have like someone who is going to think positively of me if I get to a swap or a merge. Like I want like some kind of just positive vibes from someone. And so like, I, you know, being a bad liar, you know, I think like might actually, <laughs> you know, you're, you're both lying and you're doing it badly. Like that, that could but cause like, negative feel like though that It's almost like that what Jelinski got nothing out of it where uh, that, and I thought at the time I was like, okay, the, I, I think that this is probably right to forfeit here, yeah. but it was almost like we busted his ass right. and yeah. then he tried to act like he was going to do us a favor. He didn't forfeit fast enough. I mean, that was it. And then he obviously didn't play it right when he went back to the tribe and said, like, I quit and gave them all extra votes. Yeah. Well, that was um, the part that uh, that was uh, I was not expecting that. I asked Jelinski about it in the exit interview. He was not expecting that. Uh, did Did you see that coming that the tribe was going to say, wait, what do you mean you lost your vote and gave the other tribe votes? Yeah, it did seem like the reaction was kind of disproportionate. And I do think it probably came down to him saying he gave up, you know, because like ultimately, like if he came back and said I had an extra vote, that would have been a red flag for them too. I mean, that's why there's, you know, these things are always sort of a lose lose, right? If you come back and you failed, then you're like, oh my gosh, you failed and now you're weak. And if you come back and you succeeded, they're like, oh no, now you have something special in your pocket. Um, and I get the desire to go on these trips, you know, to be the one with the thing or to, you know, to have the information. But like, how often does it really work out well for people? I would never go on the trip. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that, yeah, I guess there's a chance it could go well, but it, it's like, I'm trying to think of like the players that have won in the new era. And it's not like that. It has been a, a reason for people to win. I mean, Mar Marianne, I guess maybe uh, she did go on the trip early on and, and uh, got something out of it, but it's it's been probably more often than not a negative. I mean, in, with Austin, you know, he he sort of was okay for him, right? He got that. I mean, he didn't win, obviously, you know, but he mm -hmm. it really did give him that that idol, you know, that that did you know could have could have could have put him in a good position had he not given it away. Um, but but uh, yeah, I, I would be skeptical too or suspect about going on these these trips just because like you come back and there's just inherently there's this like desire to 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 characterize almost anything you've done negatively mm -hmm. um and you know for him to say I, I went and i gave up i think that was it right if he had come back and said they they outplayed me they outfoxed me you know i got unlucky i drew the bad card and he did right like if you could draw any of those three cards that's the one you don't want to draw and that's sort of where like the, the the challenge of this game is like so much luck goes into this like horrible decision um but it's kind of great i would love to see it again um but like, which card would you want to draw here, Robert? Do you want to draw the card that uh, Maria drew or the one that, you know, the, the torch card or the one that I Tevin think drew? I would most want to draw the card that Tevin drew of yeah, the, I like, I was on, you see, you should have, even if they don't pick you, it's like, ah, why didn't you? Yeah. Why I didn't you pick me? Truth. I was right. telling the truth. Yeah. You just have to tell the truth. Like, and, and then like argue the other person is lying. And then, yeah, exactly. It's only upside for, for that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jelinski certainly got the hardest thing, but. I don't know if there would have been a better person in the cast to get that card than Jelinski. <laughs> I know. I know. People, have, I've seen people say, oh, well, should this guy have been cast? He was great. He was gave us so Who much. Who said should he have been cast? You know, there's always people on Facebook. They're always saying things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Delete your account. Jelinski yeah. was like, uh, I don't know what more you could ask for in a first boot from the season. He gave us so much. You know, he really gave us so much. Yeah. I guess what would have been super interesting is like, what if Tevin would have gotten 
the skull card. Right. That would have been great to see like how he played that. He's great. I mean, I, uh, not to, I know we're jumping around a little bit here, but like, he's so good. Like he is so such great presence, like such great confessionals bring so much joy. And it's like, he's performative, but not in a kind of like annoying off putting way, you know, where he also seems really genuine. And he like has that ability to kind of be performative in a way that seems like self-aware of how performative he's being. And like, he's just able to interact with such different people and go at so many different speeds. You know, he goes from, you know, being, camp counselor singing with soda to like shy guy andy griffith bonding with hunter in you know in a scene and it's so impressive yeah he is performative but like in in like the best possible in like a like shakespearean trained actor like right. he's performative like in the way like meryl streep is performative like it's <laughs> like it's a compliment yeah exactly exactly like not like you know trying hard to to you know he doesn't feel try hardy to me yeah okay do you feel like that he could be the winner of the season he's my i would say he's my early favorite i mean is he my favorite to win i don't know but i he's my early favorite yes like it's hard to say what do you think did you think he could i i'm curious because your number one pick was Hunter. And, you know, I, I didn't do any, I didn't watch any of the pregame stuff. So yeah. I'm obviously ignorant. Um, but to me, just on like a very superficial glimpse, like Hunter is the guy you would have rooted for in the thirties, but now like that guy's going nowhere. Right. I mean, is he really, is Hunter going to win? Is he? I, I'm not sure. I didn't really get um, the winner off of episode number one Hunter. Interestingly, I want to get your reaction to this, that uh, he described himself in the preseason as JT mixed with, Tyson. Wow. That's he a good, that's a good combo. He took the Steven completely out of the equation. <laughs> good for him. Smart thinking. <laughs> but he seems like, I mean, JT and Tyson are both like insanely gregarious people. They are like massive extroverts. You know, mm -hmm. JT, especially like that's like JT's defining characteristic is just how like absolutely like extroverted and charming he is. Um, I did not get that off Hunter. You know, I got more of like a Bobby John. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You know, like I'm going to work hard. I'm like a little bit you know, reserved. I'm like a good guy. Yeah. I, I mean, I love, that. you know, I love a, a, a woodsman here. You know, like I'm, <laughs> I'm very like, I really enjoy it. The, the Nami tribe is, is stellar, you know, top to bottom. Yeah. Okay. So speaking of, to combine the two Hunter and then Tevin, they yeah. are the Andy Griffith Alliance. Yeah. Steven, are you have any familiarity with the Andy Griffith of show? Course. Who like who of our era, you know, watching Nick at night, like did not ever see Andy Griffith. You show? know, I know of the show, but yeah. it never really interests me. I've never I don't think I've ever sat through like a full episode of it. But you are a Andy Griffith fan. You do I don't know if Andy I've Griffith seen a full episode, Alliance. but I know yeah. the theme song. I know Don Knotts, you know, yes. he's kind of yes. Ron Howard. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I was more of a Mr. Furley guy. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that surprised me, I was actually just tweeting with Dr. Amanda about this um, earlier, is that, you know, Andy Griffith, which a lot of us, you know, people in coastal cities may not know, is still, um, you know, still on the air in a lot of a lot of um, small towns and, and, and cities, especially, you know, in the south. So really? it's not crazy. Yes. Uh, you know, it's not crazy that, you know, these people would have, you know, watched it in their youth, even though they're meaningfully younger than us. Hot syndicated show. Yeah, truly. It's still, yeah. it's still going. People love Andy Griffith. And it's on Paramount Mountain. Yeah. So that's, you know, among the greats. Get on, get on the Paramount branding. Plus. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Who else are you stand out, Steven? I mean, Soda was very fun, right? I really liked Soda. She, she had a very, like, you know, great, great vibes for, um, Let's see who else. Let's let's look, uh, look at the, uh, I mean, Ben, obviously very fun, right? Ben, Ben Katzman. Um, yeah. You know, I I loved Q too. You know, like Q was Q was good. You know, I love them all. They're all they're they're all you know. It's hard. To, everybody's good. Everybody's good. You know. Okay. Oh, Maria, right. I want to give Maria. Maria was great. You know, I thought she was really. You know, the fact that she was able to quickly uh, bond with Tim. You know, she's is she the oldest person out there? I mean, I think she must be like meaningfully the old. Yeah, she's the oldest person out there by you know seven years. Um, you several know, years, Stephen. Several years <laughs> older. Several years older. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, she like owned that that challenge. Um, did beautifully at that. Yeah, um, 
Yeah. Okay. I really love, yeah. All right. Well, then let me drill down a little bit with some of yeah. these people uh, that you're talking about. I think that Q is a fascinating case. And I think yeah. that Q, you know, he talked a really big game in the preseason, definitely lived up to that with his uh, first episode appearance. I feel like that instinctually, I feel like, okay, somebody is coming into the game playing this hard. It's not going to work. Yeah. He is going to, but I feel like that that Q in this episode showed us like, okay, maybe the normal rules don't apply to Q. Yeah. He didn't seem, you know, he was very, very clear point of view, right. Especially with, you know, when it came to targeting uh, Jelinski, um, you know, very like definitively, you know, we're not voting out Jess, um, but it didn't, it wasn't at least presented to us as him being kind of like dictatorial or bossy in a way that alienated his allies. Right. Like he was, it was a point of view that was, you know, supported by the story that was being told and that every, everyone eventually went went along with. Um, and I, I felt, you know, like I, I but was it, you know, Jelinski in his exits said that it was Q who first brought up the idea of quitting and that yeah. he only went along with it. Now, is this fan fiction, Rob, or I want to like armchair psychoanalyze, like maybe yeah. Q who wanted to quit himself and kind of like, sort of like floated it then Jelinski jumps on it tosses over the hourglass and then Q like felt like so much shame about it that he kind of like offloaded that onto Jelinski which is why he was so like vigorously anti-Jelinski after that yeah okay so that second part that you're adding of then okay well now let, let me take out the patsy also uh in terms of that okay he was the one that actually said all this like make it like take out the scapegoat right um it's interesting because I Jelinski told me the same thing in the exit interview. And I do feel like that if Jelinski was doing something against Q's will, yeah, I feel like Q would throttle Jelinski and his right. way. He would have been sacked on his way to go destroy the hourglass, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think Q's letting that happen. I mean, I, I think maybe like I didn't think quitting was crazy based on, you know, what was certainly not based on how far they came. They had yeah. nothing. They had like all, almost like gone through half the time and they had like a, a tiny amount of water, like quitting in that scenario seemed quite reasonable to me. Yeah. So I'm sure like Q wanted to quit, but maybe didn't want to have to actually. And again, like having known nothing about this person, except having seen about, you know, 30 seconds of airtime on television, um, I would want to quit. And Q and I have to think this similarly about things. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. A question from one of our longtime listeners, Emmy, wanted to know, I wonder if they could have stacked the buckets one inside the other and possibly plugged the holes that way. Then they could run half the distance and pass the buckets back to each other. Do you think that there was a hack somewhere along that? Now, I know it's the sweat challenge, so maybe there's no like solve to the puzzle. Yeah. Right. But did you think that maybe there was some way that you could sort of like interlock the two buckets to not make them leak? It was interesting that they were taking almost no steps to not make them leak. And I did wonder if that was sort of like part of the rules. I mean, they also had to follow somewhat a, a prescribed path, right? They had to go up and over. Like they couldn't just go walk straight to the, wait, am mm -hmm. I wrong about that? Like, that's what it looked like to me. Like they couldn't walk straight from the water to the, to the bucket. They had to like follow a dedicated path to the. Yeah, I don't know to the urns. So I do wonder if there were like some set of rules in place that like wouldn't let them. Cause like, why not like put your shirt, line it with your shirt or something, you know, yeah. I mean, it seemed crazy to not do anything to, to pass yeah. those rules. That Dalton uh, mentioned that in his uh, write up also uh, that I guess the thought is that they were maybe not allowed to do it. I asked Jelinski if you could, if why didn't you plug the holes? He yeah. said you really couldn't. There was like a, it, it was that your hands were, were, wouldn't have been able to do it. So I don't know. Even just, wrapped on the fingers, right? <laughs> By Jeff, right. come in and wrap. Yeah, no. Yeah. So I don't know if there was a, ultimately a solve, but they were not even close. So yeah. no, yeah. no issue whatsoever from us in terms of giving up on this. Yeah, and especially because you know you're thinking it's like one or one more day or whatever until you have the immunity challenge. You know why completely wear yourself out on this thing? You know which has no real upside and and not save your energy for the immunity challenge, which is the the heart of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so for Q, he's on this tribe now with Tiffany and Kenzie, who yeah. seem like maybe they have a tighter bond with each other than they do with him. Yeah. But and they Kenzie also was like the social butterfly of the tribe. So yeah. He was bonded with everybody. Yeah. She was doing great. <laughs> Tiffany uh, off to a great start as yeah. well. Yeah. Tiffany has the idol. But do you feel like that Q is in a good position here where he kind of he did get his way 
with Jelinski, but it also does not seem like he has the tightest allies in this group. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, he, you know, he went to went to bat for for Jess. You know, maybe she has there's some guy like some connection there. But yeah, that, that's a good point. I mean, I also though, you know, you've, no one's voting out Q now. You know, if, if now that like their other like you know giant guy is gone, like they're not going to take him out um, immediately. Mm-hmm. So he does have, I think, he doesn't have some 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 room to run. Um, hey, Tiffany doing that word puzzle, like that was uh, unbelievable. Like that was like the the speed with which she solved that i mean again edited TV yeah. show, but like some of the the leaps in logic that she was taking i think they did a really good job with that because even uh my wife said like they're like oh this is exciting yeah uh, when right she you made a like word puzzle exciting. to get the yeah. get the key but I, I was wanted to ask you that they i feel like that we do have a lot of like decoding of messages on survivor over the last couple seasons is that good tv people decoding messages that are in like another language oh that's interesting that's a good question i like it because it kind of like it's sort of like the fun right it's like a treasure you know you're on the, the cast it's like without it you know they're on the castaway mm-hmm. show when there's a treasure hunt and there's like a secret message but i can't really play along when yeah. that's happening like you can't okay. play along with any of the things right you can't throw the rings at the ring toss you can't run over the you know you're not lifting up a big puzzle you mm-hmm. know it's all you're not you're, you're actually just watching it on a television we'll back here. you're not really playing any of it yeah okay there's a virtual reality survivor game coming out soon have you seen this i, I did i did with uh with facebook right with uh, yes the meta, meta. quest yeah. yes are you gonna get the meta quest headset to play no no probably not will what about that you? replace Fortnite with rick <laughs> evans and gavin i don't know how how collaborative is it is it li- are you playing with other people i don't know anything it about like it solo? yeah 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 <laughs> Imagine that wouldn't it maybe that could be fun. Yeah. That could be like our poker night where we go out on a tribe with like a bunch of other survivors. That actually would be that actually could be kind of fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Could be but good. Like, it's tells- pretty like high barrier to entry to have to like buy a VR headset, you know? Mm-hmm. You know to talk to people I try to avoid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to talk about in the beginning of the episode, yeah. Jeff started off with a monologue much like tevin's monologue uh yeah. but he told the castaways that hey i just want to let you know no matter what you do that li- there's at least one of you that cannot win it's such You've an done something yeah and there's no way in any combination any of the multiverses i've talked to dr strange you can never win yeah um such an interesting thing to start the season with i kind of loved it because it's true, you know, so much of Survivor, like there's so much luck on Survivor, but the the biggest thing of all that is completely out of your control is who you are cast with. That is the most impactful factor out of anything in terms of yeah. how you do on Survivor. It's like, who's on your tribe and just generally who's there with you? Like, are you with people who you're going to gel with? Are you with people who are going to respect your way of looking at things? Um, and it's kind of interesting for Jeff to like frame it in that way of like, there's nothing you can do. I, that does seem sort of like anti Jeff's general kind of point of view, which is like, if you play this game to the hilt, then like the people will respect it, you know? And, mm-hmm. but it is sort of true that there are some people who just like, they're not going to get along with people. And, and as a result, they're not going to be, you know, respected or rewarded, you know? And, and, uh, I wonder, like, are there people? I mean, I can think of a few people offhand. Yeah, who, okay. there's almost nothing that they could have done. <laughs> to, like, to, oh, to past players. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not on this season, but yeah, past okay. players. Okay. <laughs> Should Jeff have taken the idea that there is somebody who cannot win and have gone a throwback to your season, Stephen, of yeah. Survivor Token Sheens? Let's get out the chalkboard, everybody. Write down the name of the person oh. who cannot win. And wow. then we start off the season with that. And somebody's That's already got awesome. like, all right, uh right. yeah, Banu. Uh yeah. yeah, sorry. That would be such an interesting. And does that person like get something as an advantage for like being the most loathed person on the maybe uh, they do? And yeah. I wonder if that could be something that completely changes the narrative. That person, yeah. you have to vote that person out now because now they've got uh, this great story. They get to right. day 26 and they say, well, <laughs> look, look what happened. Right. You all, I got the most votes. I couldn't win the game, but. Right. So, so taking see. the most hated person and making them even more hated. 
making them more hated or now they've become a threat somehow now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> the person who will least gel now you most, even more want to get them out. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Like give them immunity or something, you know, uh, or, um, I mean, it's kind of like what happened in token chains, right? Um, yeah, well, sort of, except they both lost, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, you know, it's a great parallel in terms of, you know, that moment of like voting those people out. And then, and then what was the question? You know, Who's the weakest? I think we were told like we're voting someone out or something. And okay. then, um, and then, but what we were actually voting them out of was like the walk to camp. And then, you know, they, they got a helicopter ride to camp and then a clue to an, to an idol. Um, but, but, uh, but yeah, I think we were told we were voting someone out. Um, yeah. All right. Well, they can use that. Yeah, that's good. They that's can good use that. I mean, Jeff seems to, I know that there was a lot of hand wringing on the social media this week over Jeff's statement with me about how they're not looking for any more villains on survivor. I, I think that people might be, dare I say, overreacting to Jeff's statement. Where yeah. Go ahead. You, you, I was going to just say that Jeff also is talking about, hey, I'm going to be harder at tribal council. Right. I, I want to get more vicious that I, I'm I'm looking to not give people a free pass. Right. So I, I do feel like that while people are getting very worked up about things like uh, I, I do feel like that the show is course correcting a bit. Yes, I agree. I agree. I mean, in general, you know, a lot of the excesses of the early 40s, you know, so they sort of have done away with the things that we kind of found somewhat irksome about about that. And uh, yeah, it feels like a much more character oriented. I mean, I, well, really, like, so the, the thing about like the no villains was they don't want to cast jerks, right? But like someone can yeah. still play a, like a villain. I don't game. even think that they will not cast jerks. I, I think that what if I was trying to like give some advice to Jeff, if he was going to talk about this more, I think he should say that we are not going to cast fake people anymore. Right. right. Because that they do not want people who are just there to I'm evil, you know, it, jerks, as you put it, that if yeah. somebody is going to be nefarious, I think they love that. Do you think yeah. they, if they didn't want people to be, a acting in you know villainous ways do you think they would put a game into the show where it was some party has to lie and make other people lose their votes right right exactly i mean but that's what i love i mean i think that's one of the great things about like survivor is you can be you know <clears throat> like interesting wonderful kind people and then you can also behave really villainously you know in in the context of the game and i, I that's like you know and then when people are just like mean or or i guess like you know phony i mean it doesn't add i, I mean i was yeah i mean like you know the word villain has become such a lightning rod i think for the for the community because we feel like there aren't those big iconic villains right now um and and you know what is you know what it does feel like there's sort of like a, a some sort of like force you know missing but um yeah i don't know it's it's a it's a it's a tricky one yeah Okay, uh, let's uh, go back to some of the other people that you mentioned earlier on. Maria, I felt like, had a very strong premiere that she yeah. was somebody I was kind of sleeping on in the preseason. I didn't really see it, but I feel like that she's going to be a force to be reckoned with, probably the most powerful person in her tribe. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, and, and um, yeah, um, really started strong um that whole tribe is very the, the vibe tribe i mean yeah sorry i'm just saying yeah over and over again. <laughs> i have nothing to add you're so excited you're so excited yeah. uh what about that savvy puzzle that they did that do you feel like that a, a mere mortal could have ever gotten to that conclusion of that there were letters that were unused that needed to be unscrambled e Yes, only because, and again, it's so easy, like being on the other side of it. But like once you've crossed, I mean, they actually, they didn't even circle the things. They actually crossed them out, you know? Yes. The fact that I do think it's not crazy to, at that point, look at the letters that are left in some kind of sequence, you know? because And they had noted, there's a lot of numbers, cross them out. There's too many numbers. We have too many digits. I don't think it's crazy to, to that there was another leap. And again, very easy to be on this side of it and say that, but I don't think it's crazy to at least explore. Hey, what are the what are the letters? And I think I also just said numbers. What are the letters that are not that are not crossed out here? 
How are you in an escape room, Stephen? I'm okay, you know. I but I like I never want to like put myself too forward, you know. So I, I end up that. like con like not contributing enough, you know, because like mm -hmm. I, if it were like an individual puzzle, I think I would enjoy it more. With the, with a group, it's like, are you doing that? Oh, should I not like should I go over there then? I guess you know I like uh, I don't want to step on any toes. Mm -hmm. But you're not pulling a Jalinski and saying let's just call the guy, let's just leave. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's like 37 minutes left. Yeah. We're not getting this. Let's get yeah. out of here. Yeah. And a lot, I mean, some escape, you know, there's also like a big, a big variation in escape rooms. Some of them are like completely random. You're like, oh, of course you had to pull the, the red mushroom to stick it on the red, you know, piece of paste. And they're like, why? Well, that's not, that's not, of course, there's no chain of logic that would lead me to, to putting the red mushroom on the red wallpaper, you know? Um, mm -hmm. They're both yeah. red. Yeah. I and mean, there's, you know, a lot of colors in the world. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What about you, Rob? Who are your standout favorites? Um, so let me try to think. Uh, I don't, we haven't talked enough about Tiffany, who I thought had a really good premiere yeah. night. Uh, that was, I actually uh, was in the Survivor draft, the podcasters, and that was the first pick uh, that I made in the draft. And I was feeling very good about Tiffany after yeah. night number one. Great pick. Great draft pick. Great, great, you know. Play. Yeah, she seems that she started strong. She she went for the the beware advantage. She you know immediately solved the beware advantage. She's in a great spot on her tribe. It seems. Um, did you think that you know Kenzie? Like we kind of got to, like she's friends with everyone. Was that a risk? Is that going to be a problem for her that she's like so immediately you know the friends with everyone person? No, I don't think so. I'm trying to think of uh, where that's backfired in terms of like the uh, new era. Like, I guess that maybe if you're like the swathy of uh, telling everybody, it's like, hey, you're my number one. Right, and then right. they cross. But I just feel like that she seems so social. Yeah. I don't think anybody's going to be like, wait, I didn't know you were friends with Kenzie also. Yeah. I think it's like when you make that bond of like, okay, where it's me and you final two and then the people cross reference those stories yeah yeah what did you think of the shaggy and daphne alliance like as in terms of like the branding no i thought it yeah. was rough yeah it's tough because like no one is oh we're the shaggy and daphne it's, this doesn't roll off the tongue you need something like even just like the scooby-doo alliance you know yeah I mean, because when they split up they never were on the same side yeah yeah it was always like uh fred was like hey i'll be with daphne uh <laughs> You, uh, you and the dog, uh, go check out over there. Yeah, that's, I guess that's Velma good. would be kind of like the third wheel. Yeah, yeah, Velma was was there. Um, huh. Okay. Um, what about Ben? Did you like? Were you vibing with his with his righteous energy? I was impressed with his righteous energy because I, I thought that Ben was going to come into the game, and I thought that there was a good chance that he was going to just get on his tribe's nerves, and I did not think that he was going to fit in. But it did seem like that off the jump. Yeah. Uh, no Van Halen pun intended uh, that he was doing great. They loved yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, very fun. I was impressed. This was what it most impressed me about Ben was that he was so consistently willing to let Charlie wear his vest. You know, you like choose this like signature piece of wardrobe for survivor. Like he must've been thinking like, this is going to be like my kind of item, you know, that like sort mm -hmm. of like, black leather vest. And he was like, fine. Like, oh yeah, you go wear it. You go ahead. You wear my, my, my cool signature item. Like that takes a great generosity of spirit, you know, to let someone else wear your jacket, you know? Yeah. Ask Angelina. We, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I feel like they get a lot of clothes now. So maybe there's more opportunity for sharing. Yeah. That could yeah. Be. yeah. One other thing that we didn't talk about was the Venus versus Randon yeah. dilemma. Yeah. Okay. So do you feel like Randon is hosed? Yeah. I, I almost think you should not say to anybody she's a parvity. And I especially don't say it to a, like another woman, you know, like, I don't think you say like to a woman, like, oh, she's a parvity. Like, I, I wouldn't even say it to a man. I wouldn't say it to anybody. You don't need to say, you know, she's a poverty. Cause like, what I feel if you like mean it as a compliment? Like, wow, she's great. She's like a loving person. You know, she's a, a lot mm -hmm. of fun to be around. No, I mean, it's got like, you know, obviously it has like, I was going to say sexist overtones, but I think it's, you know, it's just like kind of, you don't, you don't, you know, you don't need to say that to, to, and especially on day, like, you know, two or whatever. Two. He's yeah. like looking, looking for like, he catches her looking for an idol. Like say that, say I caught her looking for an idol. Not like, oh, she's a poverty. You know, like it's both like overstated and it's a little bit offensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't need it. And kind of backfired. I think that Randon seems like a nice guy, but I feel like would not be surprised to see him out first from the Nami tribe. Yeah. And it's such a strong tribe. You know, they can afford to lose, you know, one of the, like someone who, you know, ostensibly seems quite strong. Yeah. How about Liz? Did you have a thought about Liz? Um, 
it was interesting that she kind of led with all of the companies sold. I feel like that's a sign of someone who like doesn't feel totally comfortable in that situation, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're talking about all your great like life achievements, that's like I feel like that's like someone who's like I'm not totally at ease here, and I'm gonna like present myself in in such a way. Like, what did you think? Yeah, I really like Liz. I like the idea that she's a uh, email marketer. I feel like that because you have to sort of like really cater your message to your oh, audience and, and spend point. a lot of time like thinking about that. How do I get somebody to open this uh, email? And people said, uh, Rob, you're crazy. Uh, do you ever get emails that you want to open? I said, okay, touche. Yeah. But that being said, uh, I think she's a really fun character. Yeah, it is fun that she and Mariah look very, very similar. Yes, that was other. a thing at Ponderosa they talked about in the pregame where Mariah talked about how uh, that there was even times when the handlers went to go get Liz and they got Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> I I did listen. To, she was the one interview I listened to, uh, Mike Bloom's interview with her. And I liked that she like said that some of her insecurity was like, I'm not even the best Mariah here. There's another Mariah and she has rainbow glasses. You know, that's a very funny beat or bit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I liked uh, both of them also yeah. that I do think that they have a chance like they're, they're people. I feel like that if they can get through a vote or two, I think then they'll be very endearing and the tribe will want to keep them around. Yeah. I mean, I was interested because like, the reason I went back and watched Mariah's video is because Mariah, you know, really self-presented in the episode from what we saw as someone who was a little bit insecure. She's like, I want to meet meet like friends. Oh, good. Good. I've got friends. I'm like a D&D &D nerd. Obviously, someone, you know, a person after my own heart. But then in her interview, she wasn't like that at all. You know, she was extremely confident. Um, like, I've done all of these things. You know, of course, she like talked about her anxiety and her self doubts, you know, but like, you know, just like the way she presented and, you know, filled with confidence. And of course, and it's so interesting to me, you know, how just as soon as the game starts and being in that fraught social environment with people who you might not immediately gel with and people who you know are out to get you on some level, you know, does kind of like, immediately bring up so many of those insecurities okay steven let me bring in a question here from uh, one of our friends uh peter the great yeah. wants to know is uh, jelinski <laughs> steven's younger brother is what like do you is, think? do you see the jelinski he's like just like like physically or like the awkwardness part of it like i, my, I like, think he's saying that that here you look like jelinski i can see it a little bit um mm -hmm. you know I, I could see it. Yeah. I mean, and Jelinski, you know, said that his feet were like my feet, you know, so maybe yeah. there's like, that's kind of like a genetic similarity we have is like inflamed effed up feet. <laughs> you both have feet uh, issues. So yeah, yeah that yeah. could be something. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's take some more questions. Okay. How about, um, Aston wants to know how much of a pain would it be to carry Jelinski through the game? He seems like one of the easiest beats at final tribal council that you could hope for. Do you think that he could have a uh, go tential? <laughs> go tential is great. I think it would be, I hard. did not make that up. Yeah. I think that would be very challenging to, to uh, you know, especially if you truly were out on him as a meaningful partner, you know, if you think, Hey, maybe Jelinski can grow and improve. And like, there's aspects of the way he plays this game that I like. I, and I think I can beat him at the end. I think, but like, if you truly are out and you're like, this guy is going to continually put himself in situations and continually be undermining my game. Um, you know, even as everybody noted, like even when all the, all the tribe was strategizing and he kind of like was like, I'm not going to go join them. Like, that's very, that's very bad. Too unpredictable of an ally. I, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. And the, the, the question of like him talking too much, like there was something there, you know, there's a thread there to pull on Rob. Next time you, you uh, interview someone from Yanu, you know, if, if, if the moment arises, I'd be curious about all this, like, you know, you, him talking too much. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Elliot says Jelinski was such a great flame out. When was the last time we had someone on that par? I feel like that this is something we've been missing in the new era. Who's your favorite flame out in survivor history. And why is it Jacob Derwin? No, okay. I love Jake. I would never call Jacob a flame out. He's a, f I mean, he did flame out, but famously J uh, Jacob Derwin was not a first boot. Yeah. I mean, he had first boot energy, but was not a first boot. Yeah. But I'm trying to think, have we had anybody have an iconic flame out in the, it, well, I was gonna say in the new era as a first boot, you mean as a first boot. Cause like, what about like that entire, you know, tribe last, last, <laughs> last season did that, are they not flame outs? Like Brandon um, and Hannah and, and that whole mess. I guess so. But I mean, Hannah quit. Yeah. So no, I wouldn't I say know. that she really had a flame out. Brandon? Uh, 
right. I guess I, I, I guess so. Uh, that that, that kind of did not go great for him. What's the, what's the qualify someone? I needed to know what the criteria are for a flame out. Well, I think for a first boot flame out, I feel mm-hmm. like that they came in and just like ran themselves into the ground. You know, Maddie uh, played a big game, but got kind of idled out. She was yeah. trying to make a big move. So, yeah, I don't think anybody has really just run themselves into the ground. Brad from 41, uh, again, not a first boot, but also could be on the pre-merge all-stars of uh, the new era. Oh, yeah. You know I love Brad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so I, I think that it's probably, you know, maybe not since, like, a, a Zayn night that we have, like, a first, especially as a man. Yeah. That there's very few first boot men that are just like uh, wild and off the wall. Yeah, yeah. He was. Um, this was. It was very fun. It was a very fun episode of TV. He gave us a lot. We're very grateful to you, Jelinski. Is there hope for Jelinski, Stephen? Could we see Jelinski again? Uh, my guess is that's a long shot. I would not, Jelinski. If you're listening to this, do not wait for that call. Like, move on with your life. If it comes in the future, you know, second chances, five. Be grateful, but don't wait. Yeah. I've said that I don't think they would ever do the first boot season, but I do think that that would be interesting in some kind of an all-star season. If they had a tribe of like six people that they were all out first. Yes. First boot out first, like, like mergers and like finalists. It would be very fun. Very. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that they could do something with him. And I mean, why not? Yeah. I I would see it again. I would, I would, it was very, were you not entertained people? Yeah. Yeah. People. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even bring the bring back a tribe of first boots. I mean that we had Bruce come back last season. Right. Yeah, that was great. He was great TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I think you could even have a tribe of like if you don't want to bring back like full all stars, it's like, okay, here's six people. We really like them. They were out first and second, and I think that they could do something. Yeah. Um, I think that would be really fun for mm-hmm. season 50. You got it. You've got your idea there, Jeff. Go run with it. <laughs> run with it. Okay. All right. Um, Max, uh, is this, uh, Mrs. Uh, I'm sorry. M X S O N M says thoughts on Jess's chance of succeeding now that she survived the first tribal council. I do. I still think she's, you know, she pr- probably pre-merge, right? Like just based on, you know, Yanu not being the best tribe and her already being on the outs, but it's not, you know, if she can get, you know, some sleep, then maybe she's got some, some, some upside. It's just hard to see who else it would be if that tribe goes to another tribal council. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, weirdly, like, Bonnie was quite on the outs. Yeah. yeah it seemed like that he was not in, like, uh, he was sort of just, like, around for a lot of yeah. strategic conversations. We even talked about him, but he was a pretty big character this episode. Like, what's your take on Bonnie? Yeah, I think he's going to be very, very fun. I, I don't think that he is a serious player at the game. Yeah. But he's got a lot of, yeah, a lot of love for the game. Very fun. You know, a lot of, and I really appreciate that. He really like wrung his hands over this decision. And it, I always like it when there's like someone, there is a little bit of a moral component for, to him, for him. Right. You know, like he's yeah. like, oh, I don't want to like betray this person who is like my buddy and who I really like. Like, to, like, I do think that's a little bit missing from New Era Survivor. It has become like such a, you know, a spreadsheet game, you know, where like, you know, I've got, you know, these allies who have X qualities and like this one has like seven points of allyship and this one has four points. So I'm going to cut mm-hmm. that one. You know, I like it when there's a little bit more of that sense of like, oh, these are real people who I'm bonded with. And like, this is a hard game. Um, And so I, I really appreciated that he brought that aspect of it. I feel like, and maybe this is a controversial opinion with these uh, survivor players in terms of a winner, like there is a baseline level of serious that I need from a person that is going to be the winner of the season. And you could right. be silly like Marianne or uh, like uh, uh, Jam Jam, but I, I think I need, I don't know if Banu is meeting that baseline of seriousness for me. But we would have never said Marianne was the winner like in the you know first few episodes of, of that. A lot of people picked her as the winner. Really? really? Before, wait, wait, just based on the, the first episode. Or based on like pre episode stuff, pre uh, pre season. Well, I'm saying like, but yeah, but I'm saying you know, I don't have yeah, this is just the first episode. I, I probably would not have got, I I would not have gotten it right on Marianne, yeah. and yeah. then Mar- Marianne ultimately, you know, uh, brought that seriousness more later on in the season. So there is hope for Bonu. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Just in a few good moods. You just need to like peak at exactly the right moment. And that's, you know, that's the secret. Rio has a question for you, Steven. Mm. Uh, okay. Does several actually mean <laughs> seven? I've been waiting to ask you this because no. I know you study words. This is a lot of really, really flattering me, but now I feel like I'm deeply insecure about both discussing games and words. Um, mm -hmm. No, and I, I, they have different roots. Someone tweeted at me and not at all my knowledge, like not at all my knowledge based. Um, so yeah, they're not even like the same language family. Someone tweeted this to me um, that seven is, I think, uh, old English based or, you know, yes, Germanic. Yes, that's and Josh several Kettle. is Latin based. So not only do they not mean the same thing, they're not even in the same, you know, yeah, there you go, right there. It's on the screen. Josh Kettles, thank you so much. Seven and several come from two totally different origins. Um, there's the Germanic roots for Old English roots for seven, which is Siofen from Old English. And Siofen uh, fish pack. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, or do you prefer Zeven fish pack? Zeven. 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 I like Siofen. <laughs> you know, really got like a, quite a vibe there. Maybe that's, you mm -hmm. know, if I was could go back and be a teenager and um, and then, and then several is as a Latin origin. Yeah. Okay. So sorry. Sorry, Chilinski. That was great. That was like an all time. Like, I feel like I want that. If anything from this episode endures, I want like the several seven bit to, to cause that was hilarious. We'll keep it going for you. I didn't even understand his logic. Like we were told we'd have several hours. We only have four hours. Therefore we should quit. Like, I guess he like thought he'd have more time to finish it than he did. Is that the idea? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I don't know. They, they didn't even use the four hours. Yeah. Yeah. If they ran out of time, I could say like, oh, we thought we were going to have. So we only said this because we thought we were going to have seven hours. But maybe he's maybe that is how he feels like, oh, I, yeah, we could do this in several hours, but not four. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what he meant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, look at that. Ben asks, did we get more backstory packages this premiere? I feel like we didn't get any of that in 45. That's interesting. 45 really did, you know, have very few backstory packages. They spaced them out. Yeah. But I don't think, I think they really like waited quite a while. Let's see who had, who had, you know, big backstory packages uh, in, in this episode. One. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who I else? feel like that they sort of like didn't go super heavy on them. I think that we saw a little bit in the opening, but I feel yeah. like that um, were there a lot over the course of the episode? I I can't think of that many offhand. In uh, Survivor 45, they just did not all come in the beginning, that they were just very right. spaced out throughout the season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. How about... Uh, Lake, it was what happens if someone else would have dug up the immunity idol? Uh, do they both lose their uh, vote, or is it a, uh, the race of who does uh, stuff for? You can't steal someone's idol, so mm -hmm. I'm guessing that you also can't steal someone's beware advantage or like idol kits, you know. Yeah. So, my guess is that is you know, definitely Tiffany's. You can dig it up, you can wonder who it belongs to, you cannot take it. There's okay. just like some logistical rules and i you know i have in the past that said like i want as few of these as possible but this one is just one i'm on board with right like that's that's why i didn't love the um uh, knowledge is power knowledge is power right because like yeah. the idea that you like had to tell the truth to someone seemed like very artificial but like this one does kind of make sense to me that you can't like physically steal someone's stuff because it just leads i think down a, a bad a bad rabbit hole of like you know rest like wrestling over an item yeah okay Catherine wants to know are the geckos one of the best and funniest production design decisions ever? Great. So good. I want more. Yes. Are yeah. you a gecko guy? A gecko guy? I don't know. What's a gecko guy? I don't. I never thought of myself that would, way. Would you have a stuffed gecko in your home? I mean, in honor. If I was on Survivor 46, I definitely would. My wife and I one time, uh, they, they were, there's a lot of them in California. We mm -hmm. have them here too. Um, one time, uh, one of these like, geckos got into our house oh yeah we had them in our house all the time growing up yeah and it was wild yeah they're fast they're, they're, they're good they're, luck they're, they're, yeah they're they're fast little guys no we we had, I had them all the time in my house growing up good it doesn't like they're fine what, what's gonna, not gonna hurt you but they get like you, you like they run under the couch it's like okay well do i just like forget about this gecko in my house now it's probably gonna eat insects right he's probably there like helping you I don't, like it's unsettling to just have the gecko then run across the floor at it's some point. It's a symbiotic relationship. He eats the insects that are actually a threat to you. 
I think this one ate so many insects. It's now got 500 pounds. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the 500 pound gecko I would not want in my house. Yeah. I was. Were you worried that like it was going to fall on someone? A little bit. Like when there was that one point where they had to like pull it down yeah. and then lands on somebody. Yeah. I definitely was worried about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Josh Green wants to know, uh, Stephen, how do you think that you and Jelinski will do as traders in Trader <laughs> Season Three? Are we going to be the two traders? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's fun. That sounds really fun. I would love to be yeah. a co-trader with Jelinski. Yeah. Well, my joke was that then Jelinski's gonna be a trader and be like, guys, I can't do this. Uh, I gotta, <laughs> gotta cook. I gotta come clean. <laughs> yeah. The dream is to be, you know, co-traders with someone who's a terrible trader. Yeah. And you th yeah. you throw Jelinski under the bus. I would let him throw himself under the bus. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And you'd vote for Jelinski at the round table. Yeah, you've got to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. You yeah. Just, I just, I just don't, don't, don't trust you. You know, I just don't trust you anymore. Okay. Yeah. All right. How about, um, the thing I love about Ben is that his spirit has infected the entire green tribe. They're all following his vibe lead. Yeah. He's great. I think he's like, you know, like in the way that we were sort of saying about Tevin and I don't, they're not obviously directly comparable, but, you know, that he's like brings a certain thing, but it doesn't feel cringy or like try hardy. I felt that way about Ben. You know, he's like, God has like, you know, it wasn't no offense to Sifu, but I felt like with Sifu it was like a little, a little much. Like he was always like posturing and like striking the power pose. And like that wasn't Ben at all, right? Like he mm -hmm. was like the rock and roll guy, but like it was more about like the love and like spreading that energy rather than like drawing the attention onto himself. He has to be well liked. And Sifu, I feel like, was doing things that he was not like a beloved member of his tribe. Like yeah. then it made it hard to enjoy his uh, Sifu tomfoolery. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I really did enjoy Sifu. Um, I thought he, you know, was a great presence on that season. But, but, um, just in terms of like his position in the tribe, I thought Ben was doing a better job of it. Okay. All right. How about uh, a question from Sophie? Mm. If you pulled the skull card, would you rather mm -hmm. make twelve potential enemies and get an extra vote, uh, or then uh, ultimately lose your vote and maybe people like you? What's the best case scenario? Yeah, I mean, losing your vote for the first, I, I, there is like a perceived weakness thing, right? Oh, he's, he's doesn't have a vote. So like he's, yeah. and especially with the first tribal council coming up, but you know, the fact that like, he didn't think that they were going to lose the immunity challenge, which is not an yeah. unreasonable assumption. Um, the, the, uh, I don't know. I would probably take the loss there. I would probably say like, Hey, like, I, you know, this is right. Like, I, I, I think, I don't know. I don't know. But then like, I want to play the game. You know, I want to play the game. Like, this is the fun. The, the, the game is, I, I'm really conflicted because like the game is to lie. Like, you know, we're playing a game. My job in this game is to beat you. Like, it's a game within a game, you know, in a, in a, in a good way. Um, And yeah. it's not, it's not like I'm, I think screwing you over. I'm yeah, just like, do I'm literally your best. playing the card I was dealt. So don't bring like, you know, I swear on right, my kids. Right. I have the card. You right. know, I, I think that you can do your best, and then you know, the, like, oh my god, I hated, I hated having to right. do that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think like, that's it. And you're like, could be a respect make, thing. You make it a fun thing. Like, okay, like we're gonna play this to the hilt, and then maybe you even say it in advance. Like, hey, like obviously, whoever draws the bad card, not your fault. We love you. You know? Yeah. If you got that wrong, if you were in the Maria spot and you yeah. got it wrong. Are you mad at Jelinski or are you mad at no. yourself? No, in, in any situation, I'm more mad at myself. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Jelinski, you'll rue the day you crossed yeah. me. No, you respect the person. You're like, that was great. Good job. Like, that's fun. Like, you're also, it's like fun. You're like on Survivor. You're having, like, to, you know, the stakes are high, but it's fun. Yeah. I mean, what's happening at Mergatory? Everybody is like, so Jelinski, you messed with Maria. Right. You got a you, you've got a big problem now, Mister. <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, no. It was, it was like, oh, that was like we did this thing. Also, it's all in the distant past. They've all been to tribal council. You know, the the the, the lost vote is is erased. I'm still here. Like whatever. Who cares? I think people would be like, oh, that Jelinski. All right, I want to. Uh, I like the cut of his jib. That yeah. he's the he's an operator in this game. I, I might have to align with him when we yeah. get to the merge. Yeah. So I'm gonna rescind anything I said earlier earlier in this podcast about like just let it, laying it down. I think, I think you do play it, but you play it in a fun way. Yeah. Right. What I do you do, Rob? You, you agree? I mean, I, I probably would have laid it down and given up uh, and rolled over and died. But I do think that probably the optimal move is just to I'm like I, what I really liked was my idea of playing it so badly that people think that they beat you uh, that 
It wasn't like, that this you guy's gave incompetent. Up. I can't lie with him down the line. Like he's a terrible liar. He's too like, nice. Need, he's too nice. What if I need him to like, you know, back me up? You got him right where you want them. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So Steven, I got a question for you from Lee who mm. says, uh, after the Tika three and the Reba four, who's the power alliance of the season? That's fun. Um, I think, I mean, the big alliances that we saw were Tiffany, Q, and Kenzie, right? Mm -hmm. We saw um, Mariah, Jam, and Maria with, like, maybe Tim is in there, too, maybe. Or Charlie's mm -hmm. in there. No, sorry, Charlie was sort of the fourth. Tim kind of had a thing with Maria, but then yeah. Charlie was, like, maybe the fourth. So that that could be a power alliance, the the Sega three. And then we saw Tevin and Hunter. That, that could be very fun. Well, they're four. If, they're Charlie's Angels if they get Charlie. Oh, right, Charlie's Angels. Yeah, so Charlie's Angels, that could be a good one. Mm -hmm. Um. And then we saw, you know, Tevin and Hunter have a thing. Tevin and Soda have a thing. You know, maybe Soda's positive on Hunter. Like Venus yeah. is in the mix over there. So if I had to pick one of those groups to be the, the biggest and most dominant, alliance, I mean, I, I'm very in on the Tevin and Hunter alliance, of course. But I would say the Charlie's Angels probably has the most, like, power alliance upside. What do you think? Yeah, I feel like that even the Tika 3 wasn't even a thing by the first episode. Yeah. Well, right. And, and, and I don't think that the uh, re before was even a thing. So I think these things take time to gel. I, I feel like that the Nami group yeah. does feel like that that could be our Tika. Yeah, I, I kind of agree, too. I'm going to go with Tevin, Hunter, Soda. That That's the that's the core three. Maybe, yeah. maybe Who Venus. could be the fourth? Do you think it's Venus. Liz or Venus? Probably not Randon. I think it's it's Venus. You think so? Liz got a lot of screen time also, though. Yeah, yeah, she did. But I mean, what, so you're you're in on Liz. She's going to use I think her, I'm probably, her email I think Liz, ways. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think that Liz is going to like uh, force her way into that inbox, I think, more than Venus. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I okay. mean, Venus was caught out pretty quickly for being for being devious. All right. Steven, anything else that you want to make sure we touch on about this two hour premiere? I'm going to give the fishy to Tevin. I mean, normally oh. I give it to someone who's on the losing tribe, but you know, because they're like the mastermind of the vote or whatever, to me, it didn't feel like there was that much math. I mean, you could see giving it to Q in this scenario because he really did push for getting rid of Jelinski. Um, but I felt like I just thought Tevin did so excellently in terms of just like every part of it. You know, he played his card perfectly. Um, obviously he drew the best card. Yeah. He, he, you know, he built alliances with a lot of different people. I, you know, for me, like he was my, my standout pick for this, for this. Uh, and I, I'm sorry to curse you with that, Tevin, but, but that's, that's yes. where we're, uh, yeah. okay. I mean, it's a popular pick, uh, both, yeah. uh, Mike Bloom and Dalton Ross, I believe have made Tevin their winner pick as yeah. well. They were out in Fiji. Yeah. I really, I mean, I thought he was great. And, um, yeah, I mean, you know, the thing with him, Hunter and, and, and soda, I think it's going to be a very a hopeful is a very fun trio. So, yeah. Okay. All right. There you go. Uh, the two hour premiere of Survivor. Uh, we saw that Tevin gave his synopsis of what Survivor is. Do you think yeah. that you could top him? Steven? No. Oh, I don't do that. I'm not. That, that's, that's like a, you know, don't beseal me. I can't, I'm not going to be able to. I thought to, that's your thing that you know, have I, poems ready to go. No, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, I'm not the improv guy. I need some time. You know, I need to like come back. I like to think about it. I can't, I'm not on the, on the spot, you know? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, any any fun tweets from Steven uh, in the last week? Oh, God. No, I don't let's think see. so. That's we on our weekly catch up with Steven. <laughs> with my Twitter. Hey, I, yes. there's one thing. I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I wanted to to, to tell to all of the, the listeners that I am you know, extremely, I got extremely honored. I'm going to be a judge of a literary contest, which I'm so excited about because, you know, I'm, I'm also still like entering literary contests. So to get to be like the judge of one is just a, like a tremendous honor. It's at the magazine passages North and it's for their neutrino prize, which is for short, short fiction. So it's any fiction under 1000 words, which come on, like you can write a piece of fiction under a thousand words. That's so short. Just do it. It's like a blog post. So please, um, you know, check that out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, go to um, Passages North website and check out the Neutrino Prize. And I highly recommend that you enter. It's it's really cool. Um, and my gosh, like a thousand words. You can write a thousand words. Even if you've ever aspired to be a writer or like you think that's a possibility for you, like why not start by writing something really, really short? All right. Like yeah. a the, the 26 day season of essays. <laughs> exactly. 
exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, I don't mean to, I don't mean to undermine a, a short, the short, short be, um, by saying it's like a blog post, because obviously there's a lot, you know, in many ways, writing something very short is, is a lot harder than writing something really long. I mean, think about our tweets. Yeah. Oh, very tough. Yeah. <laughs> very, very tough. Think yeah. about our tweets. Yeah. Yeah. You had a tweet uh, this week that I yeah. thought was interesting. Beautiful uh, you, sa yeah. you said that I never thought I'd be in favor of burning books, but yeah. any child's alphabet book that has giraffe as the yeah. represent word for G should go right on the pyre. Yeah. You it's don't like a, a soft G. Well, okay. Obviously, soft G is a very common use case, as in the word giraffe. But like when you're teaching, as I am, a child, like what the, the very fundamental meaning of the letters is, you want like the most representative case and especially with g there's no other letter that makes the g sound but there is something else that makes the j sound so like let you know you give the baseline and then you do the the fringe cases so g is g goat goat is a very good word you know like also an animal gecko and gecko yeah not as common although apparently in your house they are um <laughs> not anymore like, yeah but j you know it's like how do you how do you differentiate between g and j so just give g the hard g and you know give j you know jello or whatever joyful mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay all right uh and then steven should we close with uh, another another one of your uh, retweets from nerve wracking? Uh, no, I really got to be. You know. Yes, uh, you re you, you retweeted. We know that you are a lover of golden retrievers. Yeah, uh, yeah. That that is this what it, what is it called the Open AI Video Sora? Oh Sona? God, so, Sora, so, Sora, I, Sora. Uh, um, uh, the yeah, I, I you know AI obviously uh, fairly very morally dubious, but I mean <laughs> Sam Altman tweeted you know, this video of two dogs, <laughs> two golden retrievers podcasting on a mountaintop. My that gosh, us. it's us. We're the, dude, that's, that is, that's, that should be our new logo. It's like our faces <laughs> like morph as golden retrievers. Okay. All right. There you go. All right. Yeah. That could be the art for next week's know-it-alls according yeah. to Xavier. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Steven, what else is coming up for you besides ju your judging people's work? Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, I I'm going to have to be ranking people's work. As you know, I'm a little bit resistant to that, but listen, I'm trying to be more like Rob Sesternino. Be arbitrary. Be reductive like Rob is. That's what's going to say on my tombstone. He was both <laughs> arbitrary and reductive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's I'm really excited. Truly, I'm like insanely honored that they asked me to do it. Um, yeah, and really excited to get to, to to get to. Okay, well, we're so excited to have you back for another season of Survivor. We'll be together again next Thursday. Mm. Uh, let me tell you about what else is coming up here on the podcast. So on okay. Friday, I'll be answering feedback uh, for the patrons of Rob as a podcast. Uh, that we're changing things up a little bit, but I'll, I'll hold your hand and tell you how it's going to be. Uh, so of course, we had the post game show live. We had the exit interview. We're here with Steven. I'm taking the strategy questions from the feedback show, and I'm going to do that. We've done the patron Q&A for the last couple of years. I'm going to be doing that on Friday, Friday at 3 for the patrons. You can still send in your voicemails. Rob is a website.com slash voicemail. Rob is a website.com slash survivor questions. For that, we'll take questions live from the patrons. And then on Monday, mm. we'll be talking about the nonsense that we uh, have seen on the week in Survivor, maybe from social media and beyond. I'll be doing that Monday afternoons with Chappelle on a little thing we're calling Club Condo. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So I think that that'll be a fun one as well. Plus everything that's going on in our Survivor podcast feed, the BNB, Why Blank Lost, the Purple Pants podcast. Check that all out. when You go to Rob's website.com slash Survivor podcast all right steven anything else no just so fun to be back talking about this show truly it's a great show like you know led with that let's close with that so it's a great show yeah. yeah all right then we'll be back next week take care everybody have a good one